Welcome back. Today is show and tell day. I have a bunch of things that I have gotten in from viewers, beautiful things, and I thought we would just spend this video looking at them. So, when we come back... So let me start with a couple of things. One, this, as you've seen before, is from Lisa from Desert Dragon Works. This is a beautiful little cat pin that she made. And as I was putting this on, I realized that I should probably mention this because this is something that most of us don't think about, but it's one of those weird things that people have done studies about. So, you know, academics never run out of things to do studies about. Ordinarily, a pin like this, I would wear over here. Why? Because I am right-handed and it's easier for me. But, I should wear it here. The reason why is when you meet someone new, you're introduced, you reach out your right hand to shake their right hand and it brings you know their line of sight right over to your right arm and shoulder so if you're wearing a name badge if you've got a nice piece of jewelry you want and you want it to be noticed right shoulder not left shoulder now i know that seems very odd because we are accustomed to seeing women's brooches on the left shoulder. And again, right-handed people, it's easier to do this on the left side, but it's not more effective. This is more effective. And I thought we'd just throw that in as a little bit of trivia. And this piece, which I really love and don't wear often enough, is a single continuous crocheted line of beads and pearls and whatever. And this was done uh, by Randy, one of our viewers. The entire length, this is all one length. If I just wore it as one length, it would come down almost to my ankles. It's just, ooh, it's wonderful. And the thing that's wonderful is when you have that much necklace, you can wear it any way you want to. So I am wearing it like this mostly because I want you all to have a chance to see it. So, there you go. Now, let's start with the one piece I was expecting. No, actually, there are two pieces I was expecting, but this one is a commissioned piece. This came to me from Desert Dragon Works. Let me see if I can get that. There we go. This is a beautiful little blonde cocker spaniel. The name is on the back, Mandy. And Lisa put it on this wonderful beaded necklace. This is a birthday present for a friend. So this is a piece of commissioned jewelry and I wanted you to see what a fantastic job she does on this. A friend of mine just lost her dog of 15, I'm thinking 15 years. A sweet dog but Mandy was blind and you know at 15 and from what I understand the average life expectancy of a Cocker Spaniel is around 11 years. So Mandy cheated fate for a good four years. My friend, of course, is devastated, and, and I miss Mandy too. Sweet, sweet dog. 
So this is going to be her birthday present, a little bit of a keepsake of Mandy. And I know that's going to put a smile on her face. So that was a commissioned piece from Lisa. And I thought it would be a really good opportunity for you to see because Lisa is our resident artist. She's been doing stuff for us since the beginning of this channel, including all those beautiful pens for the pen giveaway, the, uh, the, the chunky flatware for people with arthritis and Parkinson's and whatever. But I didn't want to give you the idea that all Lisa does is adaptive, useful equipment. No, she does wild stuff too, including pretty puppies. So that I was expecting. This also I was expecting. Uh, this is from Judy, one of our viewers, who had done a picture of me and Audie. That one's me. Uh, and she had sent me a photocopy of uh, this beautiful little pastel and said, would you like the original? Oh my yes. Thank you, Judy. So it looks like we have another framing project in our future. And Audie, Audie hasn't seen this yet. Thank goodness. Um, and I bribed Audie to stay in the other room with cat treats because I'm going to have trouble getting through this if Audie's in my lap while I'm doing it. So I hope he's going to stay in there. Um, Next up, rubber bands, big fat rubber bands, and some smaller sizes. Uh, Stephanie, one of our viewers, had paid attention and in a video, oh my goodness, I'm guessing it was probably about a month ago, I mentioned that I had run out of these big fat rubber bands. It was probably in the context of switching out that ceiling fan. I, when I use any kind of globe-shaped uh, lampshade, this over here, like that, that is a round shade with a lip that is held in place by tightening screws, and a lot of overhead lights are, are held together like that and most ceiling lamps when i'm sorry most ceiling fans is what i meant to say um whenever i install a ceiling fan or even if i just take out the globe to wash it and replace it i usually replace the rubber band i run a rubber band around that little depression in the lip that the screws go into now there are two reasons for this one, as you're twisting the screws, you are twisting them into a rubber band, not the actual glass. And it gives you a little bit of breathing room so that you don't end up over tightening and cracking the glass because it will get tight to the point where it will not move long before you're in danger of impacting the glass because of the way the rubber band absorbs the extra pressure from the screw. Also, you got that rubber band, ceiling fan, over time because it's in constant motion, things loosen, the screws loosen, the globe starts rattling, your ceiling fan starts making really weird noises. And a rubber band around that area will prevent that. So I usually uh, save these whenever I get my hands on them. And I had mentioned in a ceiling fan replacement discussion, which couldn't have been anything more than I have to replace a ceiling fan because I never actually videoed that for you. Although I probably shouldn't, I probably will next time I do it. I had mentioned that I, ha I had run out of rubber bands and I actually had to put the ratty old torn rubber band back in its place, which I will do. Um, I will put anything in there, you know, it's just, geez, I'll, I'll get out my caulk gun if I have to, just to keep the screws from directly connecting to the glass 
because again, I don't want the rattling and I don't want the glass to crack. I want a little bit of a buffer in between the end of the screw and the glass. So Stephanie sent these. So thank you, Stephanie. Uh, I know it sounds weird, but I'm really excited. Now let's take a look at something from another of our Stephanie's. And she sent all kinds of weird little jewelry findings. Um, like keys, look at these. These are great little old-fashioned skeleton keys. Um, these are wonderful. They are going to go into some kind of project. I don't know what, but something. Let's see what we got. Oh, yes. I'm going to have to pick that up. Lamp parts, they have, let me hold it up and let the camera focus in on this there. Can you see there are tiny little um, holes that I assume were intended to hold little baubles or something dangling from them. And we've got a whole bunch of these. And it looks to me like those would be very good in the Christmas ornament making department. Um, I know too bad it's not the late 60s. Those would make great late 60s earrings. But I don't do that to myself anymore. These are great. Uh, again, it's basically jewelry findings. And those are things that you can just, you can do so much with them. We've got more here. And Let's see what else we had. Um, I'm going to feel around because I don't want to spill any more of these on the floor. Um, and I just did. Other little parts. I'm not sure what these are, but I'm going to find a use for them because they're definitely very cute. Now, let's take a look at this. Can you see the kitties? We got skinny kitties. We got fat kitties. We got kitty faces. These are, they're basically two-dimensional. Uh, it looks like they were um, stamped out of a, a flat metal surface. And they are on this necklace. The clasp on the necklace has broken. But Stephanie thought that I would be able to do some sort of project with all these little cats. And I think between those lamp pieces and these cats, I, I'm definitely seeing maybe some kitty earrings. Oh, let's see what this is. Ooh, more cats. These are little beads in the shape of cat faces. Uh, there's a hole at the top between the kitty's ears and a hole in the bottom down by the kitty's little chin. And we've got some more. Ah, same thing, different color. This is, well, I don't know what color this is. This is interesting. In the right light, this is sort of a reddish brown. Very pretty. You got a whole bunch of those. Those are definitely going to be some kind of cat project too. And finally, these, which are complete little kitty beads, and they're all fat little black kitties. So. What are they? Audie beads. I'm sure Audie is going to be absolutely thrilled when he figures out I've got a whole bunch of little stuff that he could get his fat little cat face into. So thank you, Stephanie. And um, Carol.
these are beautiful cotton towels. They're like dish towels. They are lint-free. They're huge. They're two feet by three feet. Well, let me open it up. I'm, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going. See, here we go. I mean, just enormous dish towels. And I'm going to have to refold this. So let me bring this one up. In addition to my kitty cat, I hope you've noticed that we have the colors of Ezra the stove. We have these wonderful greens. Orange, which I am using as an accent color with Ezra, because that was a very common Art Deco color combination. Um, green and orange. I, I don't know. Well, it's the Irish flag, so who knows? Maybe there's something there. Uh, they combined those two all the time. And, of course, Ezra is black, cream, and green. So, I guess Ezra's going to get some new towels. And this is just, gee, I'm... The thing I love about this is that really is Audie's profile. I look at that, I see my cat. So, thank you, Carol. However, when that package first arrived, uh, Audie was outside when it arrived, and he parked his little cat butt right on top of the package. He wasn't going to let me have it. I think in part, he, he loves my mail carrier. He's crazy about her. He'd go home with her in an instant. And I think he was really excited that Jesse came and left a box, so he parks his little butt on it. And it was a struggle to get him off the box into the house and then get the box. And I was saying to him, this is not your box. Looks like I was wrong. Because inside the box... the way so you can see where it says Audie's play box now I can assure you I know you're looking at that saying there's no way that cat can get into this box oh yeah oh yeah I'm you could get a cat into a mint box I've seen the most amazing things huge fat cats crawling into little teeny tiny boxes you know they're spilling out over the edges cat box hey match made in heaven so what we have here is uh this looks like a vitamin treat and i haven't opened this package yet uh, but it's like a treat stick so that's going to be new for audie because he's never had treat sticks before this is Orca Cat Catnip Spool. Which is a spool. Oh, and this is really funny because Audie had just stolen a spool of thread from me a couple of days ago. And I really had to work to get it back from him. Um, he did not want to give it up. He was having a great time with that. Oh, we have a whole little package full of cat toys. These look sort of like Christmas crackers. And Audie actually does have a, a cracker-looking toy like that. And it's his favorite. He loves that. This. Cat treats. Audie will do anything for a cat treat. So this is great more cat treats again and it looks like we have two packages of cat food i think this is moist cat food um chicken salmon rustic blend wild caught salmon rustic blend now, audie's funny about what he eats um so I'm going to have to time the opening of this carefully. Uh, 
because this is nice stuff and if Audie won't eat it, I will not allow it to go to waste. So I'm going to see if I can give him a little just before the mail carrier arrives because my mail carrier is feeding stray cats in her neighborhood and she doesn't feed them dry food. She feeds them moist food. Uh, so if Audie doesn't like that, her strays will go nuts for it and it won't be wasted. And then finally, is that adorable, this cute little mouse? So that's why I didn't want to have to open this package in front of Audie, you know, with, with him in my lap. Because, you know, everything would have been all over the place by now if Audie had seen it and gotten his paws on it. Um, usually, he's pretty good about this sort of thing. But that's a whole box of cat toys plus a box he could be sleeping in. So, that is my most recent batch of gifts from viewers. Thank you all so very much. As I've mentioned many times before, I can't keep everything people give me. I wish I could. So, usually, if people give me stuff, it could end up going into my Etsy shop. All proceeds go to the schoolhouse fund. And when I say all proceeds, it's like the money from Etsy goes directly into the schoolhouse's bank account. Or I'll use them as giveaways and share them with other subscribers. I got some lovely things last month. And there are a few of them that I, I pulled out and said, these are just gorgeous. And they're going to be giveaways because they're, just lovely and I do really want to share those or sometimes they'll turn into bits for tidbit trays but Audie's presence goes straight to Audie um, it's like you don't take toys away from children at Christmas time and when Audie gets a cat toy it's his I let him keep it he, he you know he it's like a child so thank you all so very, very much. Oh, and these things, none of these are going anywhere. You know, a dish towel, oh, like I don't need a dish towel. Oh yeah, you know, um, little bits for projects. That's going to be so much fun. Okay, so that's what we have been up to lately. Um, I am still putting together some um, slideshows. Uh, we've got some critter pictures, uh, which I am downloading, trying to, I, I'm trying to get a similar feel, one picture, you know, so that it's not a jarring slideshow. So that, that's nice. And we've gotten some other pictures. I get some lovely pictures from Sausalito, California. And that's going to be great, especially because I'm always so very excited to see pictures of California when there are no earthquakes, mudslides, brush fires, tsunamis, you know, no other bizarre act of God. Um, it's like, whoa, California is actually a pretty place when it's not crumbling to its foundations. So, we're going to do a few more slideshows. In the meantime, of course, we're still going to be enjoying JLS's wonderful pictures because everybody seems to find them very soothing, very calming. And while you are watching this, I am off on our road trip to Lutz Antiques. So, that is what is coming up tomorrow. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Let me get my list, make sure I don't forget anybody. Judy, who did the little portrait. Uh, Stephanie, who gave me rubber bands. Mm, so exciting. Stephanie, another Stephanie, who gave me all of those beautiful jewelry findings. And those are absolutely going to be projects. And Carol, who really, you know, Audie's cup runneth over, thanks to Carol. 
So I'm sure Audie would just be excited by this. And Lisa, who did that beautiful little portrait of my friend Tina's recently deceased pup. So thank you to all of you. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day.